What's up guys, today we're just doing a little discussion video about the LG V35, V40, V50, and V60. Uh, just advice for and things to know buying uh, going into, you know, late this year for the holidays or for early 2021 if you plan on buying any one of these phones. So before we get into it, uh, if you want to see the full comparisons, um, you can go to YouTube, just type in YouTube search bar, just type in Matthews Tech, and let's say you're looking for V35, you will see all my videos in comparisons, gaming tests on the V35 and vice versa. You can do it for the V40. So if you want to see all those comparisons, just for the people that have not seen them, uh, have done compared almost all of these phones, even to the G lineup uh, as well. So please do check that out. And uh, yeah, let's get started. I just want to talk briefly about uh, just some of the things you might sh uh, should know. Uh, so starting with the price, the V35 is the cheapest phone, brand new. You can find this for around uh, 230 bucks. It was the last time I seen it brand new. I will try to put the links down below. Uh, the V40 you can pick up for around 300 bucks, uh, brand new. Again, if you want to get it renewed, most of these phones are renewed and uh, used. Uh, it'll cost you uh, around 200 and something bucks. So if you get it, uh, you're getting a really good deal. Uh, you do have the V50, which costs around 400 bucks on eBay. I see them going for eBay. <laughs> on eBay, I see them going for around 300 bucks in the uh, you know refurbished or used market. Uh, you do have the V60, which is going to cost you around 600 to 500 bucks. Um, and then you can add the dual screen case, uh, and that's going to be an extra 100 bucks. And again, the prices do vary depending on where you get it. All right, so taking a look at the design, as you can see, the same design pretty much across the V35 to the V60. As you can see, the same uh, fingerprint scanner layout, the same logo, same cameras. The only thing you'll notice about the cameras is that on the V50, they actually got rid of the... Um, camera bump so as you can see it's completely flat right here which is something that I love I think the V50 has the best design still out of all of these phones because of that and the lighting 5G logo is pretty cool as well so I've always really loved uh, the V50's design uh, here now one thing that you notice that they moved away from was the power button as not the fingerprint scanner anymore uh, you have a dedicated power button from the V40 to the V60 and uh, I guess this is pretty cool I mean it's not bad, but the thing is, I guess if you're laying it flat like that, you have your phone flat and then you just want to turn it on, you have to pick the phone up, which is annoying. So I guess that's why they moved away from it, but again, not completely sure. So all these phones have the headphone jack with the quad DAC, which is really nice. So if you are a lover of audio, you will definitely love these phones. Um, all of these phones... Well, actually, you only have stereo speakers on the B50 and B60, just, uh, you know, your standard single fire speaker on the B35 and B40, which are still great quality, by the way. Uh, the B60 had the biggest jump in speaker quality. It is super, super loud and has excellent quality. They did a really great job uh, with these stereo speakers on this guy. Also, you'll notice the B35 is just really small and has kind of a wider body compared to all of these phones so uh, do note that it's definitely the smallest one I believe it's got a six inch uh, display and as you can see the mammoth of a phone the V60 oh, what? Oh, has a 6.8 inch display and it is a huge phone so if you're coming from the V35 uh, you're gonna be like shocked at how big the V60 is uh, even compared to like the V50 it is still kind of a and you know a bigger phone here it's very tall too uh, so do note that now just to talk about the display so all of these phones have 1440p displays except for the v60 so lg moved away from it i noticed they moved away from it from the velvet uh their new lg wing phone has 1080p and honestly you're not going to really notice the difference i know it's going to be i know everybody's like what but you really don't notice the difference with this display so they're all oled displays they all have the same color and i'm telling you guys if you ever get a chance to look in the v60 the v35 you will see that they really look identical even when you look up close so I don't know if they improve the display quality of the V60 itself but it definitely uh, you cannot tell the difference now one thing you'll notice about the displays is that no notch notch 
wider drop notch so you do have a bigger notch on the v40 and v50 no notch so if you're anti notch uh, then you know the v35 is going to be a nice option for you uh, but the downside is that you don't have the wide angle camera that the v50 and v40 has so if you're ever trying to take like a you know group selfie and you need that wide angle lens to get everybody in uh, you will not have that uh, but I do like the move to the wider drop notch on the v60 it makes the experience more uh, immersive especially since you just have a huge display like this um, so yeah I definitely like the uh, move on here now now you do have the snapdragon 845 845, 6 gigs of RAM, 6 gigs of RAM, 855, 6 gigs of RAM, 865, uh, 8 gigs of RAM. So those are the base model specs. You have micro SD support on all of these phones uh, as well, uh, which is really nice. And uh, all of these phones include NFC. They all have a water resistant rating uh, as well. So you can get these phones wet and they won't immediately break, uh, which is really nice. They all run USB type C as well. Um, so just talking about the power of each phone these are still capable of gaming so a lot of people don't believe me I have gaming tests actually on all of these phones these are capable of gaming even the oldest one the V35 can still play Fortnite Call of Duty PUBG on high settings no problem again watch that gaming test uh, if you don't believe me so these older flagships are still really great better than most mid-range phones uh, it's something that uh, you really have to take note of uh, but as far as performance obviously the A65 is just gonna blow everything out of the water and plus it's future proof it's uh, you know you'll be able to play the latest whatever new game comes out that's really powerful we are able to play that on the A65 no problem um, the A55 is just there's not a huge jump so if you have the V50 I would immediately upgrade because of that chip because you're not gonna notice a big difference in terms of speed um, you know, if you watch my comparison, you just really won't notice the difference here. Um, it's very, you know, minimal. Now, I said the V60 has the best speaker. I think it was way uh, improved over the V35, V40, and even V50. I think these speakers, not only are they a little bit louder, but the quality overall is better, which I was really excited for. I'm a big fan of, you know, speakers and phones. Uh, but let's go ahead and compare them all to the V60 here. Starting, you know, they're all max value. I believe. Immediately, it makes the V35 sound really flat, and it definitely does not have that depth uh, with the bass, and it's just not as loud. Let's go ahead and do it with the V40. Again, closer. It's closer on the V40, but again, still a little flat, but this has more, way more bass than the V35. But again, nowhere near as loud and crisp as the V60. Honestly, I can't really tell the difference from the V40 and V50, to be honest. It's still not as loud. Yeah, I can't really tell the difference from the V40 and V50. I think the V50 is just a little bit louder, but it's using this little tiny speaker, so I don't know. It just doesn't sound like that much louder over uh, the V40. Uh, but as you can see, like I said, huge, huge speaker. Uh, increase on the B60 again since it's such a massive phone it's what you would expect right all right so let's briefly talk about cameras here so one of the things that 
they did a really good job on with the V60 was color accuracy. I think this is the most color accurate, and I think also think it gives off the little vibrant, punchy colors that people really love with the Samsung and uh, iPhones. Um, but one thing I love about LG phones is that they give off really color accurate photos. Uh, as far as image quality, again, I tell people all the time the V35 is still a super solid camera. And uh, detail to photos is all really great on all of these phones. Depth of feel is really great. Uh, this one color looks off because this was a different day. But um, just trying to make a point here. Uh, the V60 uh, definitely has a great camera. But it's not going to be a huge jump from the V50. You won't notice a huge difference unless you get to the front facing camera. I do think the V60 has an excellent front facing camera. Uh, I think skin tones are really awesome on here. Detail. It's just a really nice front-facing camera video on here on the V60 has definitely been improved it's something that I really like and uh, you have that 8k video so if you're into that uh, then you're gonna have a really nice time I think the mics on here are really solid as well but all of these cameras are super close to each other again they all get better you know step by step uh, but definitely is you're not going to see a huge jump. I think if you're coming from the V35, then you would definitely uh, be really excited about the V60. But if you're coming from the V35 to the V40, or from the V40 to the V50, you're not going to see a huge jump uh, in quality. Uh, these phones have done a really good job with their camera quality. Again, check out those comparisons if you want to see them uh, side by side. Now, one improvement that I did notice is, again, like I said, color accuracy is going to be a big jump from the V35 to the V60. And also, depth of feel is going to be definitely a little bit better. You get that more blurry kind of look uh, on the V60's camera. Uh, so that is one thing that I really like. Uh, but overall, again, the real improvement is going to be the front-facing camera and the video and the mic quality. Uh, that is where you're seeing a huge difference now. As far as just dynamic range, detail, all of these are going to be taking very close photos to each other. Alright, so let's talk about battery life. All of these phones can get you through a day of battery, no problem. So you can get through a full day, no issues with all of these phones. Uh, no matter if you're kind of gaming or whatever, uh, whatever you're doing, you can get through a day. Now, the V60 did have a huge jump with the battery, uh, but it is dependent on whether you have the dual screen case and whether you're on 5G. Same with the V60. If you're on just standard, your standard 4G, these phones will get you around 8 hours of screen on time easy, 7 hours and 30 minutes, and you get around the same uh, on the V35 as well. Uh, so big battery increase you can easily get on here without the 5G and without the dual screen case, around 10 hours of screen on time. Now I've seen drain tests on YouTube, people that you know were crazy enough to drain this, I've seen it go for around 12 hours. So it's just really crazy how great the battery life is on here now. Does that have something to do with them downgrading to the 1080p panel? I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, it does have a bigger battery, but it also has you know massive display. But that might have something to do with it, the 1080p panel uh, versus the 1440p's on here. Um, so all these phones have wireless charging as well, fast charging, which is really nice. So again, these are all great uh, battery life phones. Uh, so be sure to let me know what you guys think. What phone are you planning on going with? Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.